Right. So hopefully you're all on board to discuss styling today. And the usual note to say that uh, this is being recorded and the presentation and the recording will be sent out to you all afterwards, uh, along with any uh, hints or tips that we come up with during the, the chat today. Um, feel free to interrupt at any time if there are any issues. What we're going to talk about is um, styling, obviously, but under these um, headings, so sort of try and group things together. So we do cover um, <clears throat> labels uh, and all sorts of colors, patterns, icons, lines, uh, various things. Um, and then the presentation today is fairly short. So there's a busy interactive session for those of you who'd like to pitch in. Um, and I've got a couple of uh, trials for you to get through um, and then we'll see where we go. But uh, that's, that's today's agenda. So styling is the art of using changes to indicate differences to viewers. Um, you can do it with um, difference between features in the same layer, or it's particularly good at highlighting differences between different layers. Um, and the whole point is to try and make details stand out, become more useful to the viewer, um, and let them see the information even more clearly than you're usually presenting it. And uh, there's quite a good video and this styling item in the knowledge base. So I put a link in here for you. Um, and if time permits, we'll go to the video afterwards. It's only about five minutes, but it's, it's well worth watching. So the first choice that you make within styling is are you going to be single class or class based? Um, and the single style is that all the features will, will obey the rules that you've set up there. And in class base, it means that as you change data, um, the attributes in data, then the, the, um, the way they look, the style changes accordingly. So you, in other words, you set up your attributes according to um, the data. And as you change that data, then the attributes change as well, which is uh, very appealing. So the sorts of times when you might use class based rather than simple, or sorry, single, uh, I've taken the example of grit bins um, in the asset register. They're color coded for you for percentage of fullness. So, you know, a red foot bin, grit bin definitely needs it, attention. A green one is probably full. Um, planning applications in particular are somewhere where the status changes on a regular basis. So you can change the color of your applications depending upon whether we're awaiting a council decision, whether they've been rejected, approved or under appeal or whatever. And you can vary the labels in all sorts of ways to demonstrate differences. And we will actually be doing that for real. Um, a label is quite a powerful way of, of highlighting stuff. So the only chance you get of styling a layer, and when I say you, I mean all of us, is in the parish layer, those ones that you create yourself. So all of the third party layers and the asset register are out of bounds for us to make changes to in terms of the infrastructure, but you're absolutely able to style anything you like in your parish layer collection. And what you can do depends upon the geometry of the layer that you're working in. So you remember that there is only one type of geometry per layer. It's either a point, a line, or a polygon, and you'll see that the options available to you will vary depending upon which layer you're operating in. And you get into the start, whoops, sorry, I didn't know to do that. We're going to show you how to get into style. So on the left, you've got columns in the normal way of your layers. Um, and I'm saying, let's work with a polygon. So I've gone into the Graham test polygon and right clicked anywhere in the, the layer um, and up drops the mini menu. And we're just going to select style. Now I'd like you to just pay attention to this fabulous red square in the middle, because that represents, I think, a cricket pavilion that we added during the polygon. Um, testing. Um, it, that's going to change as we make changes in our um, styling, and you'll be able to see the difference uh, when we get to the end of it. So I just sort of bring it to your attention here. Remember, it's just a big red square. That's all it is. 
Okay, so when you click on style, up comes this style page, and effectively it's, it's broken into four columns. So on the left, you've got the style options, on the middle, you've got labels. The third layer varies um, according to what you're doing and into what sort of geometry you're in. And then the fourth layer, the, the, sorry, the column, the preview is really useful. It's, it's um, immediately effective. It shows you exactly the impact of the changes that you've made and a, and a very good way of seeing what, just what it is that you've done. So we're gonna start by going up into the, the left-hand column um, up here and selecting on single. So it's just a straightforward drop-down list, this single. It's, um, if you click on the little arrow, you get um, single or class space, and we'll get to class space later. Um, all of the class columns here are remain, lay, sorry, the, the class column remains grayed out if you've clicked on single because you're not selecting class based. And the label columns will all, or sorry, all these boxes to do with labels will remain grayed out unless you select a label column, which we are going to do. So uh, we're going to click on the label column and see what happens. And given that we've chosen my test polygon, then the label column, when you click it, comes up with these choices of the three columns that we got in the test polygon. And then there's the metadata here, which you can also use if you need to. So we're going to uh, make a selection uh, of the name, but I just wanted to mention to you that um, because we haven't yet actually selected anything, the labels column is still blank. This second column for labels is grayed out and it will change, of course, as soon as you select one of these fields here um, to be used as the label column. So I just highlighted that to your attention. So we've clicked on name, it's gone into place. Um, and immediately these columns have adjusted. You'll notice that the labels has become live. Um, and the preview has now got a name icon in it because that's going to be the name of your label. And as you make changes now, you'll see that everything in here alters. So these two boxes under here, force labels and displace labels, are used when you've got lots of features in a small space. And the system will default to not showing labels if they're all going to get crowded on top of each other. But you can override that and force them if you want to. You can also, if they all, if you're using, for instance, points, which is just circles uh, on the map, then the labels can get in the way of the point itself if that position is crucial. So you can use displace labels to just set it, offset it a little bit so that it doesn't cover up the actual point that it's labeling. Um, so in here, sorry, labels column two and this one column three is where you can make all sorts of changes. Now we will be showing you what those changes are. So I'm not gonna go through them all now. Um, and this is extremely well covered in the video. So seeing is believing. So if we can make time for the video, um, certainly we'll do it in the session. And if we can't, I strongly commend it to you afterwards. Um, there is a feature here for the label minimum scale and the label maximum scale. Now, like everything else in Parish Online, as you zoom in and out, the amount of data available uh, changes depending on the level of scale that you've chosen. You can override that for labels. You could say, I don't want labels to appear until we've got, uh, sorry, they disappear when we get to this minimum scale and they disappear when we get to this maximum scale. So this is the range within which you want labels to appear. Uh, I've, I've filled it in on the next slide just to show you um, the sort of things that you can put in there. So we're basically going to make some changes now and show you what the impact is. So you can see that. In the left-hand column, I haven't actually changed anything, but I have just put in here a couple of examples for you to see the sorts of things that you can put in. So one in 400 scale is where you stop showing the labels and one in 5,000 scale is um, basically you have to get down below that before the labels will show up. Um, so what I've done in making the changes is I've gone into this layer and I've warped up the size to 44 just to make it big. So you can see name is now quite large. Notice that the preview is adjusting to everything we've done. So um, 
I then turned on the halo color as yellow. Remember that you get a color choice whenever you click on one of these fields, up pops the choice, you just select whatever you want. And I've also ramped up the halo size. I think it defaults to two when it starts, so I got it to 18. And the halo is this yellow bit around the name. And then we've gone for a green background. We've gone for vertical lines, ding, 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 and the vertical lines are gonna be purple. Um, and we've set them at three, a scale of three apart. So which basically gives you the, um, the density of these lines. You can control all that within here. Um, very flexible, very simple. And I've deliberately chosen vile colors so that you can see the impact. Um, it's much easier that way. All right. So now you can see the impact on that big red square where we started. First of all, we've labeled it. Secondly, we've changed the red to green. We've changed the purple stripes um, and they, we've got the um, intervals between the stripes and we've got a halo around the name. So that's the impact when you click on the save button uh, and you've decided to commit your changes to the map. Lo and behold, it does do something. All right, so we've looked at the styling using single. We've created edges and managed labels. We've looked at fills, patterns, and lines. And the next thing is how do we apply all this in class-based styling, styling? So we've gone back to the style option. And instead of clicking on single, we're going to click on class-based. Um, and basically, that means that every time a feature either changes or its status changes or whatever the class is that you've selected, then that changes the colors accordingly. So we're going to click on class-based. So up here, we've gone to, from single to class-based. Then in the column here for class column, it asks you to select which of the columns available is going to be the one that the class is based on. So again, we've had three columns in our sample, just name, date, and status. And it automatically selects the first one for you. When you select class base, it automatically selects name, um, but you can change to whatever you like. What I want you to look at is having selected name, there is only one record so far um, in this uh, layer, and that's the pavilion that you've seen, the bright red one, or the, <laughs> the multicolored one now. Um, so because you've selected name, it gives you the choice here of the number of records in the, in the, in the system. So you, if you had 50 records, you get 50 of these and you could adjust the colors of each of them according to the expression. So this is the class, if you will, that you're making changes on. What we're gonna do just to show you is to say, okay, this is what it looks like when you select name and we've just got one record. Uh, what we're going to do now is change status, which has three options, and therefore you'll see this middle uh, third column here adjust accordingly. So let's check select status. So status is now the selected um, class column. You'll notice that uh, we've now got three levels here, the three statuses, not yet started on a construction page. They've all got colors that the system selects for you, but you can change all of these. You, you just click on the colors and up comes the option. You can choose the degree of opacity uh, and you can choose the colors of the patterns and the lines, which I've left all as, as the defaults. If when, you when you're using a class-based style, if you do decide to use labels, Note that there's this little button up here by the label sign. Every time you've made a change in here, you want to click that button. Basically, it just copies the changes you've made to all the layers, uh, sorry, all the features in this layer. So you don't need to do it for a single based style, but you do need to do it for class based. Just remember to click that uh, whenever you're making a change. Okay. So, I said at the early part of this session today that the facilities available can change depending upon which geometry. And we've been in a polygon so far. Now is the fun time of coming into icons, which you can only get in points. So we're going to select a point layer, which is this one. And we're going to right click on style, or sorry, we right clicked here and the layer came up with the menu. And we're going to click on style. So because we're in a single um, option and we're on a point layer, we now have 
the different choices in the third column here. And you get these, it defaults again to symbol, circle, and these colors. And this is what it looks like in the preview field. However, you can just click on the word symbol, which I'm doing, and it will come up and say, do you want symbol or icon? We want icon. So we select icon. And nothing immediately changes as far as you can see, except that this column has become now called number blank red. And you just click on that to bring up all the icons available. So we click there and up pops the icons list. Now this is a list of hundreds of icons. You can scroll down here to go rolling through them and you get all sorts of variations to use. Um, bear in mind that this is quite a big field. So um, if you have a slow broadband connection, just wait a few seconds. Um, it, do sort of, it, does, it appears to be doing nothing, but in point of fact, it is downloading all the icons. Um, and then you can scroll through whatever you like. For, for today's argument, we're just gonna click on the helicopter to show you what happens. So we clicked on helicopter. You've got an icon here. It is a low flying helicopter. I warped the size up to 92. The default was something like 12, I think. And this makes it clearer here what we've chosen. So if you're all happy with that, you click on save and that actually shows it on the map. So our little point that was here on our test site has now become a great big helicopter icon. Um, just to show you uh, basically how you can start really making things stand out in your, in your map for your presentation, for your viewers' delight. Okay. <clears throat> We've now made some changes just to demonstrate uh, how the icons can be adjusted to things. So I've altered the style type from single to class-based, and then I'm using status as the class column because that gives me these three choices here. I've also gone back to the map whilst you weren't watching and added two new features um, to the point layer. So that I've got something else to change the columns on, uh, the labels. And we've turned on the label column using status. And uh, I think I've the colors and things up a bit here, just for exciting. Moment. So you'll notice I've also assigned um, new icons to these two other expressions. So underneath status, you have three choices of not yet started under construction and finished. And I've added, uh, we did low flying helicopter for the first one. We have now put camping for the second one and bridge for the third. And again, I walked up the size to make it blindingly obvious that we've done something. And now click on save so that you can see the impact on the map. And you can see it's quite dramatic. Uh, we've now got an icon for each point. I told you I added two points. We've put in the labels. And although I didn't mention it, I've selected the place positioning of the labels as to the left and in the middle of the icon. So this under construction appears appeals to that icon, applies to it, finished applies to this one, and not yet started is to this one. So you can see that the icons have changed according to the status which was the column that we chose uh, for the class based. Um, you can select all sorts of different colors for each of these icons. You can change all sorts of shapes, um, any number of variations. So the opportunity of making your diagram uh, very clear is, is tremendous. The opportunity of making it hugely colorful is tremendous. Um, and I hope you're all feeling very creative. So, if you had uh, not been happy with the circle that is the, the default start for your symbol, the little sort of dot shows up in the, uh, the preview screen, you can change it to square, triangle, diamond, or cross. It's worth doing that um, just so that you can see the, the impact. Um, and there, just a matter of clicking on the little button to the right of the uh, symbol. You'll see, you'll see that uh, if you click on the word circle, then it drops down to show you these options. When you switch from symbol to icons, as we sure showed you, you had hundreds of icons become available. Uh, one of the reasons that there are hundreds of them, that there probably aren't hundreds, but each one is, is presented in different colors. So that uh, if you have uh, selected 
your bridge or your helicopter as your icon, you can then, well, not a, the helicopter is not a good example, but the bridge you can see in different colors. Um, and lots of them are in different colors. A lot of them are like traffic signs. So they just come in the red triangle with the black lettering. Um, but a lot of them are colored, coded, just to give you more options for presenting different um, symbols. Now, I think this is probably blindingly obvious. I didn't need to put it in, but I did notice that I hadn't mentioned it anywhere. So um, when you change the data of a record, then the color will change accordingly to what you said. So for instance, if we'd had um, planning applications as the column that we're using as the class column, then every time a planning application changes from say under um, or awaiting decision until the decision is made and it says rejected or, or um, uh, approved, then it will change to red or green accordingly. So, and when you change the text in a label column, then the, the label does change on the map as well. And it's rather a complicated way of saying something very simple, but never mind. Um, once you have a, an idea of what the names of some of the icons are in that icon list, there is a search facility, a little magnifying glass um, up in the top left corner, where you can type in roughly what you want. And I say roughly because it's, um, it's, a bit, it's one of those things that takes a bit of getting to know before you can use it effectively. But once you get an idea of what you're looking for, then you can type in the name and it'll um, get you to that icon much more quickly than scrolling but it may not seem that way if you have a slow connection. So be patient, please, but it does work. <clears throat> All right, so now um, we, it's your turn to sort of play around for a bit. Um, and I think you want to try it for yourselves. So I'm assuming you've all got Parish Online running on your PCs and you're all familiar with switching backwards and forth from this Zoom window where it's telling you what to do to your Parish Online window where you're going to be doing it. Um, and I think looking at the attendees here, you're all familiar with that. So your first step is to go into your parish online and select any geometry you wish out of your available parish layers. So it, it doesn't really matter if you choose, choose point, line or polygon, it's just that you need to be aware that your choices within styling will vary according to the geometry. So anyone you want, right click on the layer and pull up style from the mini menu. And if you're choosing to run on a live layer from your parish layers, don't worry with all the styling that we're doing today, we can just turn off and, and you can go back to standard. If, if you have a test layer, then I suggest it's a much better one to use, but um, it doesn't matter if you're using a live layer because we can uh, turn off the styling is as easy as turning it on again. Right, so assuming that you've all gone into Parish Online, you've all selected your uh, appropriate layer and you've all clicked on Style. I'm moving on to the next slide to show you in Zoom what I think you ought to give a try. And what I'm suggesting here is that you use Wild Extreme. So in the way I chose revolting colors um, and very large text and icons to just show the impact. And I think it's because we're testing, we're playing today, it might be a good idea for you to do the same because then it makes what you've done much more clear. You can see it. If you have made gentle changes, then you may not spot them. So uh, I'm assuming that you're now all in style and you're all having a go at this. What I suggest to start with then is just staying with a single style type to get going. And we're really going to play around with labels now. So you're going to add a label, select any column as your label column. That makes the second column on the screen come live. So you can now start playing around with text size, text colors, fonts, halos, um, and change the alignment and the place of the uh, label. And as you're making the changes, you should see them all pop up in the preview of the right-hand column. So I've given you some examples here uh, on my screen. I'm just hoping that you're all busy working away. I'm just going to change the size of my screen so I can see you all. Good morning, Ramon. Nice to see you there. Um, everyone is not looking puzzled, so I guess we're working.
It's brilliant. I've just renamed, I've just shown all the labels on my memorial trees that I've done around my cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, when I do earlier sessions, I try and teach people that the beauty of Parish Online is that you can undo things as quickly as you've done them. So it's no problem. Um, but yes, I'm delighted it worked for you, Tracy. Brilliant. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Good. Um, well, I am assuming that everyone is sort of happy with this playing around. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Everyone's nodding their heads, so I guess we're okay. So I'll just go back into um, slide mode. If I can do that. Can't let me do that. Just going to cheat here slightly. Now to the next slide. There you go. So on the second try now, I'm going to suggest that you make your style option a class-based one. So select any class column you like. Decide whether or not you want to have labels. And if you do put labels, remember this is class-based, so you'll need to click that little uh, icon up by the label sign on the second column. Um, in your third column, make bold choices again, just so that you can see them and watch the effects in preview. And then when you click on save, you'll actually see the difference it makes to the map. And I would like you to view this as a play around. So by all means, mix and match and make a mess of things. It doesn't matter. Um, but if you're bored, then this is effectively the um, sort of the end of the formal presentation. So I'd suggest that if you've got um, five minutes spare, then by all means, go and watch the video because it, it clarifies everything we've been doing this morning. So I've given you the instructions uh, down below for going to watch the video. It's only five and a half minutes. Um, and I think it's a worthwhile five and a half minutes I commend it to you. If you prefer, we can go into Q&A now if people have got questions and answers or we can do it after we've all watched the video entirely up to you. Shout, wave your hand or scream or whatever if you object. <clears throat> So since no one's objecting, I'm assuming you're either continuing to play or you're going to watch the video. It's good. It's going to be a good play, I'm saying. It's a good play. Yes. Well, I yeah. think the idea basically is to give you lots of confidence that A, um, you can make a change. If you don't like it, you can change it to something else. B, um, turning everything off when you've finished is a piece of cake. You just go back into your layer, select style and reverse everything back to zero. 
and you find that you've made your damage. If you're in a test layer that you're playing this, then it doesn't matter, leave it as it is. Um, but there's lots of choices. You can use the variations to get lots of differences. The idea is for you to see what you can do. Um, in particular, it's worth testing the icons and doing a search on an icon just so you can see what I mean, that you need to be familiar you may know what you want to see, but if they've called it a bridge and you're calling it a, an aqueduct or something, you'll never find it. <laughs> Once you get um, familiar with the terminology they've used to name their stuff. And some of it I, I don't think is particularly intuitive. You know, intuition is whatever it is to each individual. <laughs> so this is, this is playtime. But you did say you couldn't, it had to be parish layer that you can edit. So with our bins, they're in the asset register, so we wouldn't be able to change the colour of them, would we? No, no, you, you can't make any style changes in the asset register. That's in right. No, that's fine. It just doesn't give you the option on the drop down menu. You could copy your grip bin layer, though, couldn't you, into a, a parish layer, so that you could so edit it? But be, be wary, when you do the copy layer, um, it sounds wonderful, Tacey, but it doesn't copy the data, it only copies the structure. Right. So, um, and really the data is what's important to you, where each bin is. Um, so if you copy from one layer to another, you're going to have to re-enter each of the features. It's a... Uh, it's very good for copying polygons and things like that, but um, it's no good for all the data that you store with the polygon. So if you've done a complicated drawing around the boundary of a field or a cemetery or something, that's really useful to copy it to your parish layer. But um, unfortunately, the data doesn't go with it. That's one of the things we've asked for, but it hasn't been implemented yet. I'd just ask a question, Graham. It's not strictly related to styling, but uh, just following on from previous um, courses, uh, is to do with the um, the asset layer and uh, the planning side of it. Yeah. Um, could I use that? I mean, we're only we only comment on planning applications. We're not the planning authority. But uh, one thing we do do, we got to devolve responsibility for street naming and numbering within the parish. Um, could I use that section of the asset register for keeping a record of street naming and numbering applications as they relate to um, to individual properties? So, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. The, the, um, in fact, the planning part, as far as I remember, is specifically for work that the council is doing as a, you know, in creating applications rather than vetting them. So yeah. that's precisely what it was written for, yes. Right, um, okay, excellent. You, you may remember that I suggested during the session that it's worth taking a screen snapshot of things as you do them, just so that you've got the dates on which you first started and so forth, so that if they change later, you've got a record of what the original setting was. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, I, I think that's exactly what that planning there is there for. Okay.
So I'm assuming that people are watching the video or if you have done, then let me know and we move on. In other words, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I'm all done. You're all done. Okay. I haven't watched the video, but I was playing with something else, so I'm fine. <laughs> so that's, that's fine, Claire. No, the, the video was just there to A, let you know it was there because I think it's worth watching. It sort of solidifies yeah. everything we've done today. Um, I will watch it. It's going to be there all the time. It's not going away. Right. So that, as I recall, is the last slide. Yes. So we're back to the usual thing where um, please. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Um, if you'd let me know if A, there are any things that this doesn't do that you'd like it to do, or B, there are other sessions you'd like, or C, any questions you've got in your heads whilst we're here. And everybody's had a chance to say something today, so I can't pick on anyone in the moon and say, where's your contribution? <laughs> I think in time, the only thing I would say is that we've got salt bins and dog bins that are local authority responsibility and some that we've put in ourselves. So I suppose in that layer, it might be useful. We've cut, we've coded them separately in the words, um, but I guess a different color for those kind of things might be quite useful. But. If you look in the, in fact, when you do watch the video, you'll see they've done exactly that, that they've color coded oh. the, dog, the dog poo bins are different from general waste. And that's part of the, one of the examples they use. So yes, you can. Oh, okay. Right. They, they must have been okay. listening to you. <laughs> um, so the um, my usual plea to everybody: by all means, do join the Friday afternoon banter sessions if that's convenient. Um, I'll send you the link in the email that's going to follow. Um, I'm wide open to questions if you've got any. But otherwise. Um, I say that we're done for today, unless anyone's left struggling with anything that we've been doing. I think it's very straightforward, isn't it? I hope it's been useful. It's been very useful as usual, Graham. I'm going to have to yeah, say goodbye because good. I've got an approaching Hoover coming. The cleaners are in the building. <laughs> and the Hoover's getting closer and closer. <laughs> yes, your stress level is rising. I can see you're beginning to yeah. aspire and look very anxious. <laughs> well, it was lovely to see you, Peter. Thank you. Take and care. you. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. I'll yes, thank goodbye. you very much, Graham. It's very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Take you care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Ramon. Um, yeah. Did you get any answer from Cambridge about the layers? Well, or... I sent them everything. Yeah. And thank you. It was very helpful. Uh, haven't heard back yet. No, I thought that would be the case. It always takes time. Yeah. But I I'm glad I got the response in the first place. I was like, woohoo. So yes, something... exactly. Yes. Oh, no, I was, that's, that's quite a step forward. So well done. Well, yeah, I wish well, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you so much for the, all the wording and um, the help. Oh, that's that's great. So you're in a different place today. No balloons saying you're engaged. No, no balloons <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the office and sharing it with my colleague, Joe. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Uh, well, good. Well, good luck so, and um, see so, you next time. Yeah. Is, is that the last session that we don't have anymore? Is it the number five? No, the there's very another last one? The, no, there's another one, number six, for, On the si um, for public layers. All oh, right. Uh, do I have that link? I'll have a look. When is it well, on the... The, the? So if you remember, just go to chagosconsulting.com. Yeah. And uh, you can see it there under group sessions timetable. Right. So session six. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so I go on, on the consulting place. Yeah. Okay. Because I think I had all the links for the meeting by email to this, but I'm not sure I've got number six. No, they ch I change the timetable as, as time rolls on. So as each one you know passes by, then I say when it's going to be next. Oh, brilliant. Or okay, I made, I'm glad or I made a new one or someone asks for a new one. But... Yeah, <laughs> anyway. lovely. Well, thank you very much. Great to talk to you. Nice to see you. Bye, Joe. Bye. Bye.